Hey guys, today in this video, I'll show you how to get started using ProfilePress. So without further ado, let's begin. From your WordPress dashboard, click on ProfilePress on the left hand side. Now we are on the dashboard and here we have a list of steps that we can follow to get started selling membership plans. And at the bottom, we have an area where our analytics will be displayed. Let's begin the setup process by clicking on Create Required Pages. On this page, we'll start with Global Pages at the top and our first item is login page. If you have a login page already, you'll need to select it from the list. If you don't, you'll need to create one. So I'm going to click on this link. I'll open this in a new tab. Let's go to the tab that we just opened. And here we have a short code for a default login form, but I'll show you guys how to create a custom one. Let's click on add new at the top and we'll use the drag and drop builder. So now we can see a number of different templates here. And we just want to make sure that we're selecting login and not registration or something else. So we'll just go ahead and select one. I think this one is fine, but first we'll need to give it a name. So let's call this login and we'll go back down. We'll click on select template. And now we can go ahead and customize the form. We have two fields here, which could be rearranged since this is a drag and drop interface. So we'll just put this back under. And if we look on the right hand side, we'll see additional fields that we can drag to our form. So we can just drag in this remember login field. And you can also edit the field by clicking on the gear icon. So you can edit the label, add a placeholder and add CSS classes to the field. You can also click on this bin icon to delete a field. And this icon lets you duplicate fields. Under form settings at the bottom, we can make changes to the forms headline as well as the sign up link label and the password reset link label. And if we click on submit button, we can change the login label and processing label. All right, so once you're happy with your form, you can go ahead and click on save changes at the top and then you can go ahead and copy your short code. So I'll just highlight this and copy it. And if you want, you can also do a live preview, but I'll just go ahead and create a new page in a new tab and I'm going to give it a name. So I'll just call it login and I'll paste the short code right at the bottom. And now I'll go ahead and click on the publish button twice. And now I'll go ahead and open the page in a new incognito window since we'll be logged out. So here's our page with the login form. And this page is really simple, but in your case, you can customize it however you want. Now let's go ahead and close all of these tabs and we'll go back to our page settings. Once we're there, we'll just go ahead and refresh the page and we'll be able to select our login page from the list. So next we need to set up the registration page. So I'll right click this link and I'll open it in a new tab. And for this one, we'll not create a custom form. So let's just copy this short code and now we'll go to new and we'll create a new page in a new tab. Let's call this register. We'll paste the short code at the bottom. Then we'll publish the page. And once that's done, we can go ahead and close this tab. We'll close this one as well. And we'll repeat the process for each of the other pages. So I'll just go ahead and speed up this part of the video since this process is repetitive. So once I'm done, I'll just go ahead and refresh the page and now we'll need to go ahead and select each page using its respective menu. So just make sure you are selecting all of these pages accurately. And once you're done, be sure to click on the save changes button at the bottom. All right. So once you're done with global pages, you can go ahead and do the same for payment pages. And the process is basically the same. You're just adding short codes to pages. And once you're done, you'll go ahead and select each one from its respective menu. Click on save changes. And if we go back to the dashboard, We'll see that we have now completed this step. Let's set up payments. So here we can see the different payment methods. We can see whether or not they support subscriptions. And here we can see whether or not they are enabled. To enable a payment method, we just need to click on this link like this and click on check to enable. Then click save changes. Now, if we go back to payment methods, we can enable others. We have Stripe, PayPal and Molly. So if you're using Stripe, you can click on connect with Stripe. And if you fill out the form on the next page, you'll be able to connect Stripe automatically. You also have the option to manually add information from your Stripe account into these fields. Now, if we go back, I'll show you how to manually connect PayPal. So first we'll click on PayPal in this list. Then we'll need to go to their developer website, which is developer.paypal.com. On this page, we have two options to create an app. It could be Sandbox or Live. Live collects real payments while Sandbox is for testing. So we are gonna use Sandbox and I already have a profile press app, but you can click on create app if you don't have one as yet. You'll just need to enter an app name, choose between merchant and platform, then click on create app. 
So I'll just go back and I'll click on Profile Press. And I'll be copying information from this page to this one. So let's start by copying our client ID. So I'll just highlight everything. I'll press Command C to copy. And I'll go back and paste it in this field, Client ID. Now I'll go back to PayPal. And under Secret, I'll click on Show. So here is the secret. We need to highlight all of this and copy it. Then we'll go back and paste it in the secret field. Let's move down to webhook setup. So we'll need to get a webhook ID from PayPal and paste it in this field. So I'll go back to PayPal and I'll scroll down to the sandbox webhook section. It's right here. I already have this setup, but I'll show you guys how to do this from scratch. So I'll just go ahead and delete this and we'll just wait for it to finish. Once it's done, I'll click on add webhook. And now we need to go back to profile press and we'll need to highlight and copy this URL. And once we have that, we'll go back and paste it in this field. So once we've added the URL, we can choose to subscribe to all events or choose the ones that we want to subscribe to. I'll choose all events and I'll scroll down to click on save. This should generate a webhook ID, which we can find once we're finished. It's right here. We just need to highlight all of this and copy it. And we'll go back to profile press and let's paste it in this field. Now, if you want to add additional payment methods for PayPal, you can check this box. And the final option lets you remove the billing address fields from the checkout page. Once you're done, click on save changes and we can go back to payment methods where we need to go back and enable PayPal. So I'll click on check to enable and click save changes. And I'll go back to payment methods and under test mode, I'll click on activate. Now under default payment method, we can use the drop down menu to select PayPal and we'll save our changes. So we are now in test mode. All right, let's go ahead and close this PayPal tab. Let's move to checkout fields. So again, we have a drag and drop form builder, so we can just click on one of these fields and then we can just click and drag to change their order. We also have the option to add an additional field. So for example, I'll add the confirm password field. I'll click on add field. And now we can just place this right under password. We'll keep the billing address the same and we'll click on save changes. All right, so now we can move on to the taxes tab. So if you enable taxes, you can go ahead and set this up yourself, but we recommend getting help from a tax professional. So in the next tab, we can configure file downloads where we have the option to choose a download method. We have three different options. We can also configure a download limit and expiration time in days. We also have the option to restrict downloads to logged in users. And then we have a security feature for file names. We can click on save changes once we're done. Let's go back to our dashboard. And now we can add our business information. And this process is quite straightforward. You'll just need to add your business name, address, city, country, and so on. I'll use some dummy information for this example and I'll click on save changes. And once we're done, we'll go back to the dashboard and we'll set up membership currency. So here, our first option lets us choose a currency from this list. We'll keep US dollars and we'll move down to the next option, which is currency position. And this lets you change the position of the currency symbol, which is the dollar sign. So we have four different options. We also have a decimal separator option, which lets us choose between a dot or a comma. We also have a thousand separator option, which lets us use either a comma, period, space, or no separator. And finally, we can choose the number of decimals after the last dollar figure. We'll keep it as two. And once we're done, we can save our changes. Now, if you want, you can activate one-time trials to limit the number of times a customer can apply for a free trial. And finally, we have the option to configure the terms and conditions label. Once you're done, click on save changes. Let's go back to the dashboard. And now we can move on to the final step, which is to create a membership plan. So here we'll click on add new plan. So let's give our plan a name. We'll call it premium. And I'll just add a random description, but in your case, you can go ahead and describe the plan thoroughly. Then you can add a purchase note for your customers. And by default, we are creating a user role for this membership plan. Next, we'll set a price for the plan. So I'll just make this a dollar. And in the next section, we'll configure our subscription settings. We can select a billing frequency. It's set to monthly by default. We can also choose a subscription length and we can add a signup fee for the first billing cycle if you want to. And this option lets us choose the length of the free trial. So let's choose one week as an example. And then we have a section to configure our downloads and integrations. Once we're happy, we can click on save plan. And once you have saved your plan, you'll get a checkout link that you can use anywhere on your website to sell your plan. So I'll show you a quick example where I'll use this in a pricing table. So I'll go ahead and open the homepage in a new tab and I'll scroll down to the pricing section. Now let's edit the page. 
And again, we'll scroll all the way down to the pricing section and we'll use this premium plan. So I'll not change the price. I'll just go ahead and edit the button. So on the right hand side under link or URL, we'll click on this edit icon, which is the pencil icon. We'll remove this pound symbol and we'll paste the link in this field. Now we'll click on this icon to set the link and that's done. So we'll click on update at the top and we'll open up the page in a new incognito window. And once the page loads, we'll scroll down to the pricing section one more time and we'll click on get started. And that will take us to this checkout page where we could enter our account information and under payment information at the bottom, we can choose to pay with PayPal. And we have the option as well to pay with a debit or credit card because we checked the additional payment option. All right, so now we are gonna explore two additional features offered by Profile Press, and we'll start with content protection. So let's hover over Profile Press and we'll click on content protection. Now on this page, we'll click on add protection rule. Now we'll need to give it a name, so let's call it post subscription. Now under content to protect, we need to select a condition. So we have many options to choose from, but we can go ahead and use selected posts. Now on the right hand side, we'll select the posts that we want to restrict. Let's use the first and second one. So we'll choose that one as well. And under access condition, we can choose who has access to the content and that will be logged in users. Now we can select the membership plan that has access. That will be premium. Let's choose the roles that have access. We'll choose premium, editor and admin. If you want, you can choose which users have access using this field. And we can also select what happens when a user without access tries to view the content. We can also configure the message that gets shown to unauthorized users. So for example, we can click on custom message and we'll go ahead and create one. So let's say subscribe to access this content. And finally, we have an option to configure the restricted access message style. All right, so once you are happy with your rule, scroll up and click on save rule. Okay, so we'll go ahead and view a quick demonstration so you can see how this works. We'll open our post in a new tab and we'll open this one in a new incognito window. So once the page loads, we'll see the featured image for the post, but right under we have the restricted message. And if we sign in using any of the roles that we configured, we will have access. All right, so let's view the final feature, which is member directories. And before configuring this, we'll go ahead and do a quick preview. So it's basically a searchable page with information on the members. So we'll go back and we'll click on add new. And we can choose from any of these templates. So we have default and Gerbera. Let's start by adding a name. So I'll just call this directory or directory one. Now let's choose Gobera. And once again, we have a drag and drop interface. So we can use the fields on the left to build what's on the right. We have display name and biography. Let's go ahead and grab the first name. We'll just drag it right here and we'll drag last name as well. And remember, you can always delete fields that you do not need. And you can also rearrange your fields by clicking and dragging. Okay, now under directory settings, we can choose which user roles to display. So we can choose premium and maybe subscriber. We can also show or exclude users by entering their IDs separated by commas. We can enable profile pictures. And on the right, we have sorting options. Then we have search options, result and pagination, as well as colors. And each color option lets you use the color picker to select your custom color. Okay, so once you're done, click on the save changes button at the top. So now that we are finished, I'll copy this short code and I'll just go ahead and create a new page like we did before. So I'll give the page a title. I'll call it member directory. Then I'll paste the short code and click on publish. And once it's published, I'll go ahead and open it in a new incognito window. All right, so this is our membership directory page. I only have one user, but if you have more, you'll be able to perform a search. All right, so we have come to the end of this video and I hope you found it helpful. Thank you for watching and see you next time.